Most of us can only dream of being a doctor or a professional athlete, but for Laurent Duvernet Tardif, it's no dream because he's both. The six foot five, 320 pound Quebec native is a starting offensive lineman for the NFL's Kansas City Chiefs. But for the past four years, he spent his off seasons at McGill's medical school pursuing his MD. In May, Laurent graduated, becoming the first ever active NFL player to earn a medical degree. And he's also somehow found time to join us in studio this morning. Doctor, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> My pleasure. So was there ever a point where you thought to yourself, geez, I don't know if, if I can do both of these at the same time. Maybe I should focus on one and then the other. I mean, of course, there's been a lot of challenges, you know. Uh, I've been working on that for the past eight years. And, and at some, like, throughout my curriculum, people were telling me, you know what, you're going to have to choose at some point. You're going to be good at both things yeah. at the same time. And I kind of listened to those voices. When I got to McGill University in 2010, uh, I stopped playing football. And I was like, you know what, there's no way I'm going to live without football in my life. I need that kind of balance between sport and study. And at that point, I just promised, you know what, I'm going to finish it and I'm going to show people that it's possible. And, and, and that's what I did. I've been juggling both for the past four years since the day I got drafted by Kansas City. Uh, you, you've received a lot of notable shout-outs. The Prime Minister yeah. uh, congratulating as well. How about your teammates? What, what did the impact of you becoming a doctor have on your dynamic with the team? Well, you know what? When I got to Kansas City in 2014, there were a lot of question marks. And people were like, you know what? This French-Canadian uh, who's in medicine didn't really know how to play football. Like, what, what is he doing here? Mm -hmm. But I, I think over the course of the years, uh, guys, my teammates, my friends, kind of uh, rallying around the cause. And, and people were really excited when I got back to Kansas City after graduation. It was a, it was a good moment. And I I think people are able to appreciate the, the, I mean, the effort that I put in. You know, I think a, a lot of people are struck that you've got this affinity for medicine, for health, uh, and you are in a, a sport that is itself facing, in a lot of ways, a health crisis with uh, traumatic brain injuries and the like. Could you ever see this new specialty of yours in medicine transfer over to perhaps working with the league at some point in the future? Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, and I think that's what I want to do. You know, I think I, I got that kind of a unique perspective with being both a physician and a football player. And I want to use that to try to, 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 try to you know, uh, get involved in the research, you know. And, and if I can publish something, try to help the sport and make it as safe as possible, I for sure want to be that person. You know, one thing I, I found really interesting in sort of researching this is, is, is one of your teammates says, you, you wouldn't be able to put in a full day's work um, on the gridiron and then go open a book uh, and study unless you were passionate about both. Uh, at what point did you realize that you needed to feed both of these fires? Oh, I think at that moment in 2010 or whatever, when I stopped uh, football in order to become a doctor and I realized, you know what, I need that schedule, like that, that supercharged ske schedule in order to perform well. And, and, and at that moment, you know, when I'm, I was not able to juggle uh, well with medicine because I didn't have football in my life, I was like, you know what, this is what I want to do. I want to, I want to, I want to get involved in the community and show the kids that it's, it's possible to do both at the highest level. You know, uh, to, to be a professional athlete is, is rare. To play football is very rare. And, and the shelf life of an athlete is very short. Pretty it's short, three and a half years. Three and a half years. And somebody once said, if you don't at least have a plan as to what you want to do after football by the time you're 30, you're behind the eight ball already. Mm -hmm. So have you had uh, colleagues in the NFL come to you and talk to you about sort of, you know, how, how can they get prepared, how they can get in the proper mindset for life after football? Yeah, and I think the NFL is doing a pretty good job at, like, giving out options. Because we all know, like, you need to have a strong plan B if you want to transition well into your after career. Right now, I want to focus only on football because, yeah. I mean, now that football, uh, like, medicine is, is almost done, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to have more time to focus on football. But, but I think it's really important, you know, to, to kind of project yourself into what you want to do after football because, like we said, life and career are pretty short. And how do you think you can help? Uh, what's the biggest health problem facing the NFL right now? I mean, we, we heard a lot of, about concussion, and, and that's really the field that I want to get involved with. Uh, I'm working with uh, Athlete Intelligence, a company based in Seattle, who are developing sensors to put in the helmet of a uh, player, uh, and, and also ModGuard. That way they can record a different end pack and try to design better helmet. There's also a company uh, based on the West Coast, Vices, who are doing like new helmet with neurosurgeons. So there's a bunch of really, really cool stuff that is happening out there, and I want to be part of it. And, and how is that? And your thoughts on the Canadian medical system? I gotta ask. You know, here we are. You're on the front line. What is, what's it like? What, what needs to change? What's the best and worst thing about a hospital in Montreal? Well, I think living in the States, you realize for sure that uh, we, we, we're, we're privileged here, you know? And, and sometimes people don't appreciate, you know, when you're in the States, people are like, you know what? If you're in Canada, you're gonna wait six months to get an MRI. 
Maybe that's true sometimes, but it's never for urgent thing. And I think we're pretty good at treating emergency situation and, and, and urgent care is really good. And, and of course, like if at some point we can reduce those lines for MRI for athlete, it would be great. But, <laughs> but I think we got to be proud of our system and try to improve it to the best of our ability. Dr. Giverne Tardis, thank you so much for being here today. Happy Saint-Jean. Hey, thank you so much. And uh, best of luck this year with the Chiefs. Thank you. Thanks.